Thanks everyone for thank you everyone for joining. And let me go ahead and share my screen really quick. And uh, Kate, please let me know if you can see this. Yep, I can see it. Okay. And before I get into the cloud security, I kind of like as I as I always do during some of the few presentations for those who have seen me present before, I'm going to share some tidbits. Right. Uh, we have plenty of time to cover what we need to, so I'm just going to go ahead and and point out a couple of cool links that that I hope you guys will uh, find useful and take advantage of. Okay. So I don't know if you guys know, but you can we actually have a product selection link that can allow you to compare the performance of any piece of uh, hardware um, that we took to market. So for example, if you wanted to compare the performance of a 3430 over 3410, um, all you have to do is just add them here and it will actually give you a side-by-side -side comparison, including the performance specifications. The only thing it will not tell you is SSL inspection and for that, you have to reach out to your SE. So you find that useful. I also want to point out that we need to take advantage of our uh, end of life announcement page. I will, by the way, I'll be sharing all these links uh, with Katie so that she can share it uh, after we present, right? And this is where we uh, list the PanOS software that has reached end of life, right? And I just want to point out that uh, 10 OS 10.0 is already has been officially end of life as of July of, of uh, 2022. And 10 OS 9.1 is also end of life as of December. It's going to be end of life this December, right? So what we're looking for is for customers to start moving into 10 OS 10.2. Okay. So if you guys are running 10 OS that is below that version. I kind of want to make sure that you A, upgrade, and two, this will also allow you to take the, the advantage of the newest PanOS capabilities. And I'll take that to the next step here. Also, <clears throat> um, in, make sure that you look at the hardware that you have. A lot of customers still have old 3000 series, 5000 series devices, okay? Um, and those are already gonna be end of life. So if you look at, for example, 3000 series devices, they're gonna go end of life October 24 and 5000 series devices are end of life January of 24, right? And from a life cycle management, please keep in mind that even, even though the, the hardware might not be going end of life until, X, until some, some date in the future, the, the latest operating version that could be supported is always going to be two or three versions behind just because of the hardware limitations, right? So um, maintaining your hardware lifecycle based on the end of life of the hardware is no longer an adequate process. What you want to do is manage your refresh cycle based on the latest NOS that piece of hardware can support. And I, I can't emphasize that enough, you know, not a week goes by where I don't talk to the customer that wants to take advantage of some new, newly released capability or functionality and that they haven't budgeted for the hardware because they thought they can just write it out and magically, you know, uh, we're gonna be able to inject the new, the new pen OS in it, right? Uh, and it's just, there's no such magic. So I just wanna bring that to your attention. Are there any questions I need to answer right now? I take it as a no. Uh, so just stop me if, if there are. Uh, now, uh, next link here is Life Community. Very important. This is where we publish the latest preferred PanOS release that you can install. At present moment, the, the latest preferred release that we recommend our customers are on is 10.2.3-H4. And that is uh, that is the pen OS release um, we highly recommend you use or upgrade to. Uh, and when you're upgrading and when you have Panorama, Panorama would need to be upgraded first, followed by the firewalls. And Panorama OS has to be within two versions of the firewall pen OS that it manages. 
if you have legacy hardware, like for example, 5000 series, that's, that is limited to running PanOS 8.1, you will need to have a separate panorama to be able to manage the legacy hardware versus all the hardware that has all the new capabilities, just because of the, the, the number of versions difference. Uh, if you are ever in doubt of what works with what or which pet OS works with what or where you can install Cortex XDR security agent, right? Uh, take advantage of compatibility ma matrix, right? Like for example, if I click on Global Protect here, uh, it'll tell you everything where you can install it, what it works with, et cetera, et cetera, right? All the system requirements and whatnot very very handy tool people don't know we have it uh, or they just don't peruse our website uh, frequently enough so it's another very very nice tidbit of information um, and then finally i wanted to bring you guys up to a, a brand new uh, a page that we've launched it's called cloud delivered security services uh, this is basically where all the subscriptions are delivered through right because all of our subscriptions are delivered through cloud Right, um, and what we've done is instead of having you know fifteen different you know many different home pages for all the subscriptions, we just go ahead and, and created a home page for all cloud delivered security services, and where you can learn everything about every single subscription from a single page. Okay, and today what we're going to be talking is about a specific security subscription, uh, a, a DNS subscription. And I'll, I'll get into that in a second, <clears throat> but it's a really, really cool page because this is where we announce all of the, the enhancements as well. Speaking of enhancements and documentation, if you go to docs.paloaltonetworks.com, right, and you click on DNS security, see, we've now already categorized it as cloud delivered security services, right, for all the subscriptions. If you click on DNS security, it will take you to the page where we actually go ahead and uh, inform you of all of the release highlights and enhancements that are done over time. You know, for example, November 22, support for DNS over uh, HTTPS and, and TLS, right? We've added that in. So this is a very handy tool and it actually works across all of the security subscriptions. Um, that, that you might be subscribed to or looking at subscribing to, okay? Very, very handy tool. Uh, and then of course, <clears throat> uh, the same goes for uh, administrative documentation, right? If you go open up the admin guide uh, for a pen OS, a lot of people don't know that you can actually go up to the left, upper left corner and pick the pen OS version. You want a specific section to apply to, right? So up here I have subscriptions firewall subscriptions, but if I click on a different version, different capabilities will be listed as per version, right? Um, and this also tells you, you know, um, how to activate those and so forth. Again, very important uh, a page to be familiar with. <clears throat> um, so in here, what I did is I went to DNS security and I said, hey, let's get started with DNS security, right? What, and what it, does it takes you to a DNS security page and it explains how it works, what licensing do you need so that if for DN, advanced DNS security to work and you need the DNS security license and advanced threat prevention or, or it's just standard threat prevention license because there is some overlapping, there is some functionality that, that depend, one depends on the other, right? Um, and I'll, I'll cover that in a second. <clears throat> and in here, what it does, it does a nice job uh, of explaining every single DNS security function to a, uh, to a threat ID, okay? The universal threat ID, so that when you look within the logs, if you sometimes need to interpret something uh, because of a high severity event, this page is very handy for you to be able to go ahead and, and decipher those. Not that you need to know them off the top of your head because the DNS reporting and, and uh, uh, the control tab um, uh, is going to do a very nice job on reporting this, right? Uh, if you go to the monitoring tab and ACC, you know, those do a very nice job. Uh, but still, sometimes you can, if you're going to be doing incident response and you're going to be doing advanced 
uh, analytics, it, it, this does come handy. <clears throat> uh, one other thing that is very important alongside of DNS security, threat prevention, and URL filtering, which now all encompasses advanced machine learning capabilities, both on, on the box as well as off the box, and, that, and, and I'm gonna cover that in a second, um, is actually the inline cloud analysis that has been added to the advanced threat prevention, uh, which, which brings in additional uh, command and control protection capabilities into DNS security and anti spyware prevention. So that we have different machine learning models for wildfire DNS threat prevention, right? And then when you bring them all together, you know, one plus one is going to be three. And that is kind of that example. And I'll show you where that is in the console. Um, so this kind of concludes the tech nuggets portion of, um, of my presentation. And then another really cool thing that, that I will share with you guys is um, I actually have a little cheat sheet. It's a PanOS feature release guide so that if you want to kind of avoid having to read all the docs on the, uh, on the web page, we, we have it nicely summarized so that you can kind of see uh, every enhancement that we release with every version of the PanOS. Super handy, right? And this will help you justify to your leadership, hey, listen, we need to start adopting this PanOS version. Maybe I have some old hardware that we need to upgrade, otherwise we can't take advantage of it. It's there as part of the license, but hardware is too old to be able to handle that, right? So, so please do take advantage of it. <clears throat> now, Kate, I can take a pause for a couple of questions if there's any, any questions that, that you think uh, you, you want me to answer or I can just continue. Um, I have a Richard Davis asking, where are the 850 in the end of life cycle? Right. So if you go to the uh, end of life, uh, there is a, if you go just search Palo Alto end of life, go to hardware end of life, and then uh, look for 800 series. And if they're not listed, that means they're not uh, nearing end of life. So go 800. And they're not listed. So what happens is from the time where we announce end of sale, five years has to lapse before we end of life the box. Still, that doesn't mean you should keep it for another five years because the latest operating system is always going to be many versions behind. So do not use that as a refresh date. Next question. Um, is DNS security similar to Umbrella? Um, <laughs> yes, it is and it isn't. Um, we have, uh, from a competitive uh, perspective, uh, we have outperformed Umbrella to the tune of eight hours when it comes to detecting new threats um, in the latest competitive uh, bake-offs. Um, the premise is the same, that we deliver a DNS security um, to a device that is placed behind a firewall if on a premise, because this is DNS security in line, right? And it does not require any additional client or additional DNS security appliance. This is fully integrated with the firewall. All the network flows are automatically analyzed for all of the, the, the DNS security risks and enforced in line. So this is a very different model, right? Whereas with Umbrella, you have to deploy an agent, uh, especially if you're remote and so forth, right? Um, so it, it is quite different, right? The only, the only similarity I think that, that there is, is that they both have DNS security in a name or uh, as a function, but as far as how they function, based on use cases is significantly different. <clears throat> a lot of customers will will it will discontinue the use of umbrella once they adopt our uh, DNS security because it will cover the firewall, the cloud and, and, and VPN. Next question. 
Um, someone's asking if you can put the links into the chat that you're going through currently, um, but I know that we'll also be sending them after the conclusion of the presentation. Yeah, you know what? Um, it, it would have been way, it would have taken way too much brain power for me to think of it ahead and place them in the chat room in, in advance, wouldn't it? Uh, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, uh, I'll try to do it as we're talking, and if not, I'll just send you the link so you can turn via email, okay? Okay, that works. Um, and then we can, you can continue on with the um, presentation, and we'll okay. just address some of these questions at the end. Okay, sounds good. Guys, and uh, I'm not going to go into a presentation mode because I like to see things in this view. Uh, I just want to know, Kate, if, if this is visible enough. Unless it's... Yes, yes. Okay, cool. Good. All right. Um, so let's talk a little bit about cloud delivered security services with focus on DNS security, okay? And before, before we get into this, I want to emphasize all of the en enterprise security uh, areas that Palo Alto Networks plays into with the Palo Alto Networks uh, security operating platform. It has five value pillars. First one is security operations. For those who do not know, we now have a fully fledged uh, SOAR uh, capabilities, automation and response, right? That, that integrates with over 500 third-party vendors. So if you're looking for automation, if you're looking to automate your SOC, um, we have the capability of delivering that. Uh, that goes hand in hand with endpoint security with Cortex XDR, XDR Pro and XDR Pro for cloud. So those two kind of go hand in hand. Now um, that SOC is also a, capable of ingesting all the logs from all the network firewalls, which uh, I guess we're all familiar with. Um, you, you now can send all the network firewalls. You can either store them in, in the data lake in the cloud, or you can forward them to Cortex. And what we'll do is we'll stitch them together uh, to deliver um, <clears throat> a, a unified threat analytics and incident response platform, right? Including network traffic analysis and UBA user behavior analysis. A lot of people did not know that, that if you have these two uh, platforms from us, you can then connect and have NTA, UBA, uh, threat analytics, incident response, isolation, as well as forensics, um, uh, um, including automation, uh, which also integrates with hundreds of other third-party vendors. So this is not a locked-in system. There is some additional functionality, of course, we'll have, but it's not a locked system. Now, the third value pillar is cloud security, uh, which, uh, which, which allows the customers to migrate their application from on-prem to cloud and allow them to go from DevOps to DevSecOps. So this is cloud native security capability that, that is uniform across any cloud vendor you might use. So it's not just locked into Azure or AWS or GCP, those same functions go, it's a, so it's a multi-cloud, right, technology. And then most importantly, we now have threat intelligence uh, and incident response services via Unit 42, incident response and retainers. And those actually include um, uh, uh, red team, blue team, and purple team exercises, as well as a variety of other assessments. A lot of people did not, that don't know that, that we play in those areas. I just wanted to emphasize that, okay? Um, Really quickly, as far as the, the next generation security requirements, uh, things have changed a lot in the last few years. And at this point, it's a given that you need uh, advanced deep learning uh, uh, techniques, machine learning. Um, you need uh, inspection of live traffic. It has to be at wire speed in line, right? And it has to have cloud scale. Machine learning um, has to be at cloud scale, right? Um, all of those services now, those uh, cloud deliver services and all of the subscriptions, they are delivered from the cloud to any of our uh, next-gen firewall formats, like physical, virtual, cloud, as well as our SASE platform in the cloud. Uh, if those, those of you who don't know, we actually have a full SASE platform. Uh, that's combined of SSC as well as advanced SD-WAN capabilities, and you can use one or both, okay? Um, <clears throat> we've already covered the, all of the subscriptions. Um, 
I can't emphasize enough that for a security company, a vendor being able to deliver inline deep learning on the box and for the hardware to have enough horsepower and performance to be able to do that, because what we're essentially taking is a lot of our proprietary and patented algorithms and we're slimming them down uh, where we see that they are most uh, optimal. So for example, we understand that uh, certain types of algorithms are, are gonna be able to block you know, 40% of targeted attacks or 50 or 60. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that machine learning intelligence and we're gonna go ahead and feed it into your box so that you don't have to wait for us to deliver things uh, as a post scan, right? So, so this is very critical, right? And we're very uniquely positioned to deliver that. Uh, and we've been doing it for quite a while right now. So all the machine learning capabilities that you've been typically familiar with, with, with wildfire, um, you know, they're now on the box, right? And those are also being, and those are also augment URL filtering and threat prevention capabilities on top of the DNS. Um, very, very, very important uh, that the hardware architecture and software architecture is able to accommodate for inline machine learning, not just take advantage of what's coming down, what it can actually query in real time in the cloud. Okay, a uh, couple of other things. Everyone understands the core services, you know, advanced threat prevention, wildfire, URL filtering, and DNS security. We've been delivering them for quite a while, but many of you might not know that we now are also capable of delivering inline SaaS security, which expands our ability to identify uh, SaaS applications north of 50,000 versus the 3,600 that we might have. You know, it's, a, it's another a very useful um, tidbit. If you go to Applepedia, that Palo Alto Networks, you will see all the App ID decoders that we have that are uh, supported uh, on, a fire, in a, on a firewall. And we see that we currently have 4,100 of those, right? That you can actually use, that you can actually leverage to control how that specific application has been secured and used depending on the user or user group. We now have taken that and expanded that north of 50,000 so that you can actually control sanction around the unsanctioned applications. On top of it, we've now actually introduced um, enterprise DLP that can run on the firewall and in the cloud. So for those of you who didn't know, um, please give it a look. Um, we have also revamped our IoT. Now we can actually address industrial controls, manufacturing, hospitals, and enterprise with different types of licensing. Before it was uh, just one license, so now we kind of made it easier to consume. Again, all of it will run on the same hardware. Um, we have dedicated resources to, to, to running these specific functions, okay? Um, Kind of to bring it all together, a lot of organizations take all those capabilities and and, and take advantage of them to consolidate. Uh, I, you know, I've had customers that that had as many as 15 plus security vendors, and they they just consolidated to a, a Palo Alto single platform, right? Um, DNS just being one of many, right? Um, and and uh, and it is pretty robust. And it does make financial, not only security sense, but also financial sense, right? When, when you can say that, hey, I can get two and a half times the initial investment back within three years, you know, I think that speaks volume. Now, let's go ahead and focus a little bit on, on, on DNS. Kate, how much time do I have left? <clears throat> um, you've got about 25 minutes. Plenty of time. Okay. So now I can slow down a little bit. <laughs> and have a sip of water. Um, I, uh, DNS security risks are on the rise, right? It, it's, it's a resolver-based technology and it, it's always going to be a risky business, kind of like with SMTP traffic, right? I mean, Info Security Group says that 88% of organizations experienced DNS attacks in the past year. I honestly, I think it's a conservative figure, but okay. Um, I like conservative figures. I don't like to overcommit. Um, also, th this is a really cool gra graphic. Whoever created this, I'd like to find out and buy him a beer because, you know, it, it, I think of a typical customer, right? 
they then they invest in a firewall and they have a you know a separate web proxy right and then they're writing endpoint mal malware on the endpoint and right and then they have their email gateway and a separate sandboxing right and they got 15 different products and none of them really talk to each other in real time right um and it's very easy uh for threat actors and malware to be able to evade that right because you know see, I, I love that tunnel right that pipe that goes through all of that right i mean dns tunneling is so easy and unless you have all these technologies working in tandem right um so that it can just break the attack cycle it it, it doesn't matter at what point as long as that one of the layers does it, it it should actually be able to uh share the threat intelligence with all of the other layers right in your organization the minute we block something at the firewall, we should also tell your cloud systems and all of your endpoints and vice versa. When the endpoints detected, they tell the firewalls, right? And that should be automated, okay? And that should be sub five minutes without you as a customer having to do anything, right? So those are very stealthy, right? I mean, those are typical, this is your typical command and control attack chain, right? And payload delivery, it just goes through, um, through all of your uh, layers of security, like through a SIP, because they just lack integration and automation. And, and humans, you know, don't bring a human to a uh, to a robot fight, right? There's only so much our mind can handle in terms of logs. And, you know, we're not machines. You know, you do, you know, sims were sim technology was good, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Now you gotta have now you gotta have your playbooks automate things, and you have to have solar capabilities, right? And the more products you have, the more difficult it is to create. Uh, playbooks right therefore you know unified platform is becoming a lot more a, a lot more popular nowadays um another interesting statistics 85 percent of mo uh, modern malware users uh, uh, dns 85 percent of modern malware uses dns for malicious activity uh again i think it's still conservative i think dns at one point or another is probably going to be using majority if not all malware but uh you know, better to be conservative, right? Now, again, to emphasize, a, a lot of existing solutions out there, or legacy solutions, they, they just can't scale. The signatures can't keep up. I mean, if you don't have machine learning and deep learning and, and cloud backing it up, and, and you if you don't have technology that's able to do it uh, in line, at wire speed, you're doomed, right? I'm just gonna pick up one of these. It's just it's just the reality, right? Um, <clears throat> now, let's talk a little bit about a um, couple of DNS attack types um, and some of the DNS capabilities that we have to be able to detect them and protect you against them. Um, so a lot of attackers are stockpiling domains, right? With high reputation. So they're gonna start buying them up. So they're gonna, they're gonna strategically age them. And they're gonna register them or buy them and then they'll wait for months or sometimes years before they use them, right? And it's very difficult to detect them, right? They use, they, and they use those aged, uh, Domains and, and targeted attacks, and how do you you know how do you know which domain, even though it might have been around for years and it has a very good score, how do you know that it, it's not all of a sudden used for malicious activity? How would how would your ask yourself how would your current system be able to de to to detect that, and, or go to your existing vendor and ask them right, or <clears throat> compromise domain zones right. You know, um, a lot of attackers will just take over a DNS zone, right? And then use those to buy the security vendors with reputable domains as well, right? So it's, it's, it's basically legitimate DNS zone, right? They'll, they'll just pump in subdomains and then just use them, right? Um, so, you know, how, how do you prevent that? How do you protect yourself against those, right? So, um, with the new, with the introduction of the new advanced DNS security, 
we've been able to achieve 40% greater detection and protection over our old versions. Um, and this is due to the fact that it's not just because it's natively integrated, it's been natively integrated into the firewall, but it didn't really have inline ML, right? Um, it, it didn't have that intelligence on the firewall itself, right? Um, so we get all the feeds from, um, from all of our systems, wildfire, URL filtering, threat prevention, right? Um, and then, it, and then we, we analyze that data and find anything that is applicable to DNS security. And then we make that available to you, right? On top of the inline capabilities on, on the firewall. Um, so that, that which, which, uh, which uses machine learning, right? Above and beyond the machine learning in the cloud, right? And when you bring all of that together, right? Uh, now that makes a, a, a really nice consolidated solution that you really don't have to manage other than setting the security policy. There is nothing for you to manage. As long as the firewall is running at a specific version of PanOS and you have a subscription and you create a security policy for DNS, you're done. And all that threat intelligence will then be also shared across all of your other systems that you might be using from Palo Alto, which is endpoint, cloud, et cetera, right? And that's really the, the, the name of the game. You got to automate us, integrate us, and, and then you got to hash and be, make sure that all the, that intelligence is shared across all of your systems. Now, um, <clears throat> the one thing that I want to emphasize is um, DNS security subscription uh, is available across all, all form factors, physical, virtual, and cloud. Advanced security uh, advanced DNS security uh, requires uh, Pan OS 11. And when you go to that one of the pages, it'll actually tell you which capabilities are available, which DNS capabilities are available with standard DNS and advanced DNS. So standard DNS subscription is for older OSs, older hardware. Advanced DNS subscription is for Pan OS 11 and the newer hardware that has the capabilities, that has the uh, machine learning capabilities on the box. Um, so keep that in mind, right? And it's all going to be highlighted in the in the links I shared. Um, I um, I like this slide. I, I mean, it's kind of a dorky slide, but it's I'm a kind of a dork. So I, I like the fact that they listed, they categorized all of the DNS security capabilities um, by type, right? Callback domains high-risk domains, record, uh, record attacks, protocol attacks, and covered channels, right? And then they pointed out what's new. Again, that is pointed out. Uh, if you go click on DNS security, when you go to the docs and you go to PanOS admin guides, it, it will, every time we introduce new capability, that will be pointed out over here, guys. So just keep using that, right? And then if you want to find out what any of these means, right? Uh, nobody's perfect. What you do is you go right here, right? And you say, hey, they just introduced it. What does it do? What's the uh, universal threat ID? Okay. And do I have to do anything to enable it? Uh, or is it automatically included in the security policy, right? Um, so going forward, um, <clears throat> so let's talk about, so again, look at the attack types, right? And there are specific capabilities we have across each one of those, right? So let's talk a little bit about high reputation domains, right? Again, um, we talked about strategic age domains and compromised DNS zones. And you know, how do, we, how do we protect against that? Of course, we're gonna query who is data. We're gonna use unit, user DNS traffic, passive DNS, as well as other threat intelligence. Uh, we actually, exchange threat intel data with other uh, other organizations as well, right? <clears throat> and then um, we're gonna be able to send that threat intelligence, make that threat intelligence available to you in the cloud, as well as be able to update that to the machine learning on the box and make it available to you in near real time, right? Um, so strategically eight domains, we have subdomain DGA detection capabilities, traffic pattern uh, classifiers, as well as machine learning domain analysis, right? 
uh, for compromised DNS zone capabilities. We'll do machine, uh, machine learning, domain analysis, zone analysis, as well as web content analysis. So there is a component here that, that there is a URL filtering component here that we leverage as well, right? So that's very important for you to, to know. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, how do we, how do we get that, that, that greater coverage, right? Uh, than, than other solutions. Somebody mentioned Umbrella, right? I mean, uh, it, it's, uh, it takes a lot to manage it, right? Um, and uh, it's not necessarily part of the firewall in line, right? Um, and it's not leveraging inline machine learning capabilities. It's, it relies more on signature-based capabilities, right? Than real-time analysis. And I think that's the difference. You need to think about all of the advanced learning and machine learning and analytics capabilities that we as a company can deliver as a result of not just DNS security, but the fact that we have real-time access you know, to hundreds of thousands of customers wildfire data request, URL filtering, threat prevention, right? And we, each one of those has multiple machine learning capabilities, subscribed, unsubscribed, right? Deep learning, machine learning. And then we, we take all that data and we process it in real time and make that available to all of you, right? There is a social aspect to it because the more customers we have as part of the, the cloud deliver security services, the more accurate this this will become <clears throat> so that's another very important point right uh i, I kept this slide uh, you know dns security by the numbers right um 40 percent more dns layer threat coverage than competitors um 1.3 billion malicious domains blocked on average per month and six time detection of malicious six times more detection of malicious NRDS than other public scanners. So that's pretty incredible, right? So um, I can't emphasize enough how easy this is. And I'm actually going to go ahead and go to the console in a second. But before I do, I just kind of want to close with you can use DNS, secu DNS security subscription on its own. But if you want to use advanced DNS, uh, advanced DNS security, you also need advanced URL filtering because they, there is capabilities that they would like, they need to jive uh, locally on the box together to get optimal results. It is all connected, we know that, right? Advanced URL filtering, DNS security, resolvers, command and control, it's all connected, right? Um, even as far as threat prevention, right? And cloud analysis. Uh, so I would actually say that for optimal results, you need three subscriptions, DN, advanced DNS security, advanced URL filtering, and advanced threat prevention. And now you're going to have a full scope of the on-the-box machine learning capabilities and be able to fully leverage um, all the cloud capabilities that we can deliver in real time. Um, so, uh, Kate, how much time do I still have left? Um, you have about... 13 minutes. 13 minutes. Okay. Um, give me a, I'll take like three, four, four minutes over here, maybe five minutes to go over to console, and then I'm going to open up uh, for questions. Okay. Okay, great. Can you see the Q&A tool at the bottom? Because there's a lot of questions in there. Should I just, uh, you let me know if you think I should start answering the questions that are going over to console. I'm, I'm cool with that. No, you can go ahead and do this and we'll address those questions after. Okay, cool. One second, guys, I'm logging in here. Okay, really quickly, 
um, everyone's familiar with the objects tab of the of the firewall and dns security is actually managed under the anti-spyware section security profile so when we click on any of the uh, anti-spyware profiles and then you go to dns policies uh, this is where you enable them okay and we have now since categorized them as you see so that it's not all on one initially when we released it was just kind of one checkbox and, and customers didn't like that so we, we divide them the, um, by different types of attacks so that you can control that uh and, and manage how you want to how you want to uh handle it you know informational visibility or protection okay um again you can have dns exceptions this is where you know those codes come in handy okay and then I actually also managed in cloud analysis for advanced um, command and control detection. This capability actually comes from advanced threat prevention. I think there was one question. So to take full advantage of all the, the of all the machine learning and all the information that the machine learning can um, uh, for the machine learning to take advantage of all the capabilities, it's going to have need information from URL filtering, DNS security, and threat prevention to be able to to make better decisions, better decisions. And again, it, it, you will have all that explained within the links. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out. Right, uh, a lot of customers also also forget that we actually do have um, external dynamic list capabilities, and we actually have a lot of them out of the box made available to you. Uh, we take a, a multitude of sources. I think at least, I think maybe it's now more than 16 external sources. We aggregate them and made them, make them available to you so that you, so instead of you having to ingest them and aggregate them, uh, it's kind of done here. But if you have a third party, a dynamic list provider, you can actually go ahead and plug that provider into here as well. And leverage that in, 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 uh, in your security policies in line. So um, that's all I wanted to cover. Um, you know, other than just go ahead and enable being able to enable that within the uh, uh, within the security policy, right? Um, while that's coming up, one thing I, I want to point out is it's uh, it's very critical that um we start thinking very seriously about ssl inspection because and anything everything is encrypted right now and if even if you purchase the secure these security subscriptions and you're not and you're going to run them without ssl inspection you will be doing yourself as a service so ssl inspection is required for a lot of these things to function on a threat prevention side, URL filtering side, and DNS as well, now with the SSL and TLS DNS tunneling, right? So um, make sure that when you're investing in, in hardware, that hardware is gonna be capable of handling that SSL inspection load. If you're, if you're sizing your firewall to a gig, you have to easily assume that at this at current juncture, 90% of that traffic is going to be SSL inspected and tell your SE, to size that box accordingly, okay? So I can't emphasize that enough. You know, how many times they go and I do a best practice assessment and uh, um, a lot of these things are not turned on, right? And you don't have to scan all the traffic. You know, there, every company has the rules and policies and legal uh, will tell you which, which, which uh, URLs uh, or domains you can't like a lot of co companies will not let you scan things like uh, healthcare, finance, legal, and, and so forth, right? So you, you can easily make those exclusions. <clears throat> um, that's pretty much it, Kate. I uh, um, I can switch over to the questions. Yeah, that would be great. Do you want to just read them for me one by one and that way I can just kind of focus on answering instead of scrolling through them? Sure. Um, so the first one is from Mohammed and it's right now it seems like 10.1x is more stable than 10.2. Apart from new features, is there any need to upgrade to the later release? Um, it, it depends 
if you ever run ran into an issue or if you're looking for a specific feature that you want to adopt if you feel more comfortable mm -hmm. with 10.1 branch of code there is nothing uh that you feel like it's 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 pressing you it's pressing for you to to advance then stay where you are but like i said take advantage of of you know right now 10.2 is now the preferred release. So the support has given it a stamp of approval, unless you run into some very unique circumstances. Next question. Actually, let me add a little color to that, if you don't mind, guys. Um, with 10.2, granted, we're talking about DNS a minute ago, but keep in mind, malleable C2 protection. That, that's where I use a like Cobalt Strike, make it mask itself like Windows up there to MS Office. That ability in advanced threat protection requires 10.2. So great, it's outside the DNS conversation, right. but just keep that in mind. Right, and then you can see all the capabilities, right, uh, of what is available with which pan OS, right? You, you, you have to be very diligent about checking what functionality of what security subscription is available with what pan OS, right? Right. Thank you, Henry. No problem. Next question. And everyone, Henry is our next speaker, so that's why he was chiming in to help out as well. Um, so for DNS security, do we need advanced threat prevention is required or normal threat prevention works? Yeah, normal yeah. works. Normal works, but you know, again, you're gonna get more out of the advanced threat prevention, including the DNS uh, um, in cloud, uh, the inline cloud analysis as well. Right, well, keep, keep in mind, D DNS and advanced threat are separate subscriptions. DNS is there to, to deal with any threat or activity where DNS is the vector, right? Just like advanced URL is any threat or activity where URL is a vector. And then advanced threat protection is your AV engine, your vulnerability protection, your classic IDS, IPSI protections. Next question. Is DNS security part of the new security add-on? Not sure I understand the question. It is a subscription that you need to purchase in addition to to the standard uh pan os firewall operating system i wonder if they mean the ela package oh that's what i'm wondering yes it is if it's an ela it is part of an ela uh depend there's different types of ela packages but uh typically all three all the core subscriptions are part of the the ela um, is there a requirement of one common data lake? Uh, so no, the good question actually. So if you like to store the firewall logs in data lake, um, those firewall logs will go to the firewall data lake, right? Now, when you purchase your endpoint security via Cortex, uh, Cortex has its own data lake. And then when you want to combine the two, there is the intermediate uh, a data lake for uh, NTA and UBA, a network traffic analysis and behavior analysis, as well as all the stitching. Um, and that's where all the analysis and, and, and analytics and machine learning uh, capabilities take place. So mm, discuss that with your SE, but that's typically handled on a back end. You don't really have to think about that. It's, I'm probably telling you more than you need to know. It just you, you purchase a subscription or a service, and then appropriate data lakes get uh, uh, provisioned on the back end to be able to help handle the service. Can you explain what it means by DNS is bidirectional? Um, well, tunneling DNS is you have a re request and response, right? Uh, it, it's a query service. Uh, so I'm going to be able to go ahead and uh, actually use it as a um, as a tunnel as a I can actually tunnel data to and from uh, a uh, compromised host. Is inline ML automatically set up once you have the advanced license? No, you have to turn it on. Um, for this, is there a requirement of one comma data lake? Oh, we already answered that. Um, okay. Henry, you wanted to jump in on something? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Say, when I do the preso, 
I'll actually deep dive into DNS settings and, and I'll do the same for EDL. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of give everybody a real clear picture of what we're doing, why we're doing it, and walk you through the whole process. Okay, great. So, so are you looking at these questions? Are some of these you'll be answering in your um, presentation or should we go ahead and finish getting through these? Let's see what um up there i can i can answer some of this right now so a functional right. list of edls remember edls companies sell lists right as a subscription there are free services out there right the plus you can make your own edl for your internal resources right there may be internal resources you want to flag or have specific rules applied to right just think of an EDL as a very fancy list that doesn't require commit. And again, I'll, I'll be talking about this in depth in a little bit. The most important thing about EDLs is that we do include some of those with just the basic uh, yes, operating yeah. system. And right? I'll show it too. That, yeah. that you can take advantage of. I kind of did glance through that, but if you want to do it more in depth, Henry, that, that that's fine. Okay. What's the next question? What is the difference between signature based learning and machine learning? Uh, machine learning has it, it's basically there is different types of machine learning capabilities subscribed, unsubscribed, uh, yeah. deep learning, and it gets pretty scientific, right? I'll actually deep dive into that during, during, during my portion there for you. Okay, cool. Um, do we have a best practice cheat sheet to do SSL description? So we actually do best practice. There is a, an, a way for you to do a best practice assessment through the customer support portal. And it will actually do a best practice across your entire firewall configuration. And it will actually come back with recommendations, uh, configuration recommendations and justification on why you should do that. And it actually gives you uh, Kind of like a mini statement of work in terms of hey here's all the things you should do and you can have a progression and that's something yeah. i'm going to touch on a little bit in mind bob okay cool great um just two left um how does dns security handle dns over https um you know i my my um goal here was to make sure that you guys know that we can handle uh, DNS over HTTPS TLS security. If you go to this web page that that I pointed out, I'll explain how. I what I would prefer that you do is that you contact your SC to go over this in in more depth, uh, especially like individual functions. Right? It, it, we don't have enough time to get into it. The, the the most important thing is for us to know is that we we are now are able to handle that in line. And last question, if you're at liberty, liberty to divulge, what percent of customers are running DNS security versus advantage URL filtering versus threat prevention? You know, um, I wouldn't be, it would be a guess. I, I don't want to make a guess. Okay. All right. Well, thanks so much, Bob. Um, great presentation. And um, I'm now going to introduce Henry and we're going to go right into session two.